Rutgers University is one of the oldest college football teams in the nation. Starting play in 1869, the university has one claimed national championship to date, and that comes from that 1869 season. Currently playing in the Big Ten, the football team has played in 10 total bowl games after spending the majority of its time as an independent. But around the mid-2000s, the university experienced success like they had never seen before. From 2005 to 2014, they only missed the postseason once and even had a season where they finished with 11 wins and the number 12 rank in the AP poll. But since 2014, the team has won just 13 games. So how did they get to this point? In today's video, we'll be looking at what happened to Rutgers football. To understand how Rutgers got to this point, we need to understand their success. So let's drop ourselves in the 2001 offseason. At this point, the program had one winning season since they joined the Big East back in 1991 and they were in the market for a new head coach. The two previous coaches who were with Rutgers during their early Big East years were Doug Graber and Terry Shea, both who coached for at least five seasons. Rutgers decided to hire then Miami defensive coordinator Greg Schiano, who was a graduate assistant at the university back in 1989. So they had a guy who was familiar with the area and was experienced in leading a good unit and had been a part of a winning culture. The fans and nobody else knew it at the time, but this man was about to change the program forever. And when I mean nobody knew, I mean nobody knew what to expect from an outsider's perspective as in Shiano's first two seasons alone, Rutgers won three games in total and lost nine games by at least 30 points, including a 73 point loss to West Virginia on November 3rd, 2001. But with the crucial third season in any coach's tenure where they're supposed to show promise, Shiano did just that. Rutgers finished with 5 wins, and the team actually finished tied for 6 in the Big East in 2003, which was their highest finish in 5 seasons. So there was hope on the horizon, and although the team went 4-7 in 2004, it was the last time they would finish with a losing record until 2010. Rutgers began their run of winning seasons in 2005, where they finished at 7-5, losing to Arizona State in their second ever bowl game. In 2006, Rutgers hit the peak of their program's history, bringing in 11 victories on the season, including a Texas Bowl victory over Kansas State, and a number 12 finish in the AP poll, putting the university on the map with their first official bowl victory. Although the wins would never get this high again, Rutgers continued their streak with back-to-back 8-win -back seasons in 2007 and 2008, both of which resulted in bowl wins for the program. 2009 would be one of the most competitive seasons in Big East football history, as Rutgers finished with a 9-4 record, with all of their losses coming in conference play. But, after a letdown 4-8 2010 campaign, and then a successful 9-4 2011 season, Greg Schiano departed from Rutgers to be the head coach of the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. The next head coach at the program would be Kyle Flood, who was an assistant on the Rutgers staff. During his four-year tenure, Rutgers actually did okay, winning 9 games in 2012, 6 games in 2013, and then saw the team transition into the Big Ten starting in 2014. That 2014 season would be the last year that the program would see a winning season, going 8-5 with a bowl win in the inaugural season in the Big Ten. In Flood's last season as the head coach, the team went 4-8 and, and he was let go. One of the problems with Flood's Rutgers teams was how the defense had continued to regress in each season he was there. They peaked as the 4th best defense in 2012, then dropped to 82nd, 90th, and then had an abysmal 104th place finish in 2015. Recruiting had also dipped from around the 30s to the 60s mark by the time he left according to 24-7 Sports. And then you have the legal issues that occurred in 2015, which we will cover a little bit more later. With the end of the flood era for Rutgers, they hired Chris Ash to be their next head coach. Ash was a defensive-minded coach who had worked at Arkansas, Wisconsin, and previously at Ohio State, so for a team that had a struggling defense, he seemed like he could improve the unit. But from 2016 to the present day, his hire proved to be a backfire. Rutgers won a total of 9 games in the last 4 seasons, and Ash didn't even last the whole 4 seasons. Now here we are in present day 2020, and Rutgers went back to what was working in the hopes that they can turn the program around. Shiano, who has bounced between jobs and whose name was in the news over the past few years, took an 8 year deal to be the head coach at Rutgers. Only time will tell if this move can get Rutgers back to some form of consistent winning, and things may actually be looking up, which we will get into in just a second. But how did Rutgers get to this point? Now one of the first reasons I think that we can pinpoint is the move to the Big Ten. Moving conferences is often tough for teams to adjust to, and either they hit the ground running and slowly flame out, or they have a slow start and get on a roll. Rutgers had a pretty good inaugural season in 2014, winning 8 games, but they have yet to reach any mark close to that since. Moving from the Big East Conference to the Big Ten is such a huge jump to make in terms of football, and it's one that hasn't been kind to Rutgers. Of course, you had Maryland and Nebraska who jumped to the Big Ten as well, but they were jumping from the ACC and the Big 12, while Rutgers made a jump from a weaker conference. 
Rutgers just doesn't compare to the other teams in terms of budget and facilities, and it really shows. The Big Ten in many people's eyes is the second best conference in the nation, and for some, the best from top to bottom, with a great East Division and a West Division that always has competitive teams. And it just so happens that Rutgers is in the East Division. You have to deal with Ohio State, Michigan, Penn State, and Michigan State every single season. Those are four of the toughest games any team might have on its schedule, and Rutgers has failed to beat any of those four teams since joining the conference. They've only won seven conference games in their five seasons in the Big Ten, and have finished a few seasons winless in conference play. But for Rutgers, although they're not famously a football school, they had joined the Big Ten in the first place in search of more national exposure and increased television revenue according to a 2018 New York Times article. Now looking at the recruiting, Rutgers has also seen a huge dip in their recruiting. In the classes from 2018 to 2020, they have finished at 14th, 13th, and 14th once again in the entire conference. What is hurting a lot for the program is the lack of in-state recruits. Of course, the majority of Rutgers football recruits have come from the state of New Jersey, and they are still getting a good amount of them. But the best recruits in the state are going elsewhere to play football, and those same recruits are going to other Big Ten schools such as Ohio State, Wisconsin, and Michigan to go play football. In 2019, all of the top recruits decided to go play South in the SEC. It's surprising to me that a lot of the New Jersey recruits are heading to go play elsewhere when there's a school in a Power 5 conference that they can attend in their home state, but they just haven't had any pulling factors for the last half decade. Last but not least, we have to look at the people in power. As I look at the rankings for some of these Rutgers teams, it's pretty sad. Last season, Rutgers ranked 129th in offensive scoring and 123rd in defensive scoring. At any school, those are unacceptable numbers, but for a Power 5 school, it's almost unbelievable that that happened. The program has attempted to hire defensive-minded coordinators as their head coaches, and while it worked with Shiano, it hasn't worked since. They have bounced between offensive coordinators that led their respective units to some of the worst performing in the nation, and when you add defensive-minded coaches, you should expect to see some jumper performance, but that just hasn't been the case, especially recently as mentioned prior, where the points allowed has increased every year for the past four seasons. The head coaching hires have just been proven to not be good enough, and I mean Chris Ash was hired just six days into the new athletic director's tenure, and I really think his hire was a big reason for their fall. Ash just had to do something positive in his tenure, and he failed to do anything. He had no prior head coaching experience, and the team got worse with his appointment through both recruiting and performance. But you even look at Kyle Flood, who although had some winning seasons with the team, had a lot of off the field issues primarily in the 2015 season, where members of the team were constantly getting in trouble. Players on the team were also failing drug tests, so there were cover-ups in that aspect as well. You even go higher to the president and athletic director level, where Rutgers didn't receive additional funding upon joining the Big Ten, and the school just hasn't been set up to succeed. It's just been an all-around collective disaster at the university since joining the Big Ten, but with all the negativity out of the way, Rutgers football may be finally looking up. It's not often that a program can bring back its best head coach for a second tenure a decade later, but Rutgers were able to do that. And so far, Shiano has done everything he can to fix the team. He's working on locking up the state of New Jersey for recruiting and is doing everything he can to keep the top recruits in the state. So far, Rutgers has the 21st best class in the nation for 2021 according to 24-7 Sports. They have their first four-star recruit in what feels like forever, and this is looking like one of the best New Jersey high school classes of all time in terms of collective talent. There are a ton of five stars and Rutgers is looking to snag some of the higher rated prospects. They also are bringing in the most transfers of any FBS team, currently sitting at 20. Rutgers also has a transfer quarterback on their roster in Johnny Langan, who has three years of eligibility left, so maybe they can get something out of him. Shiano was even able to get the Rutgers board to provide more funding for their facilities. It would be an understatement to say it's been a rough decade for this program, but hopefully for their sake, things start to look up soon. But, as always, only time will tell if Greg Shiano can help revive the Rutgers football program and get them back on track. This has been a video on Rutgers football. Thank you guys so much for watching. Subscribe if you're new. And as always, I will see you guys next time.